Shalom, shalom, shalom. God bless you, God bless you. We are back by the grace of God that has kept us from the last time we spoke, which was uh, Wednesday night. I'm back with the gospel of good news. Uh, today's ministration, it has to do with uh, the prophetic school. It has nothing to do with the with the healings and all those kinds of things. So I urge you to invite somebody. Invite somebody. Invite somebody. As we are going down straight into the word, into the ministration of the word without wasting much time. Invite people, invite people, invite people. Invite, invite, invite people, invite people. I think others maybe might have logged in a minute past or two past. We just logged in at uh, three after three. God bless you. Please indicate where you're watching us from. Or even your name is just fine. Just indicate that so and so is watching so that we know if we are online. Press the thumbs up. God bless you. So today's word is very, very, very brief. It's very detailed and very helpful. It's very, very helpful. Uh, some things, uh, I'll, I will not assume that you know them. I'll just set a proper foundation that I know that this we have covered with everybody. Because sometimes you will get to move a, a long journey with somebody and you'll be thinking that they already know this. Yet the person is still left out because of simple basic things. But though the simple basic things, they are very strong. They are very, very strong because they are the ones that set the foundation. Thank you, Shaka and others. I am full of love and grace. Donald, how are you? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I see we have quite a number of people that are joining in. Okay, so let me not even waste more time now. We are back on the prophetic school. Uh, if you are here online, you are here because... You, you have some level of a prophetic grace that God wants to give you. You might say, I'm not so much into the prophetic, but definitely there is a prophetic grace that God wants to give you. So we are going to be talking about that to say, how can one work with the prophetic in a business or wherever? Maybe they think that they are not in ministry or whatever the, the case might be. So let me just start with the scripture. Uh, our book it's a uh, numbers numbers 11 25 numbers 11 25 we are, we are going to talk about the types of anointing numbers 11 25 it says uh, then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him and he placed it he placed the same upon the 70 elders and it happened that when the spirit rested upon them they prophesied although they never did so again okay so what we see there is that uh, these 70 elders were given the spirit of Moses to prophesy but this spirit was put there like at a condition. So meaning to say every anointing is a condition. Whenever you are anointed, there's a condition. So meaning to say that spirit was commissioned to say just rest for two days or seven days or 21 days. And after that mission, you can come back. So we are going to get deeper on the next when we are now talking about sword deliverance to say, it's almost the same concept to say for those uh, uh, that have had, uh, they know what I'm talking about. I will not want to start diverting the teaching for now. So it's almost as if the spirit of a man goes for a, for a particular mandate to say five days or two days or for a service. Then it moves with the person. 
then after the ministration, the spirit has to return. So this is another type of anointing. So where the spirit of maybe your mentor or the person that prays for you, it comes and then it rests on you. Then the second one, it's a energy where you are given energy, where we say that this man has been anointed, is able to prophesy or is able to do this and that. We see that in First Kings uh, 19 verse 16. I would prefer that we read so that it becomes very clear on what we are talking about here. Because if, if I don't read, you might be lost. It's a uh, First Kings 19. First Kings 19. Verse 16. And also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha son of Shephat of Abel you shall anoint him at your place basically God is commanding Elijah saying anoint Elisha in your place okay uh, this though we are not talking about the double portion here we are only talking about the energy where God was saying to anoint him to operate like you so meaning to say just transfer the energy that works with you to him but that one for Moses, we see that Moses transferred his spirit. So we will not do so much on the spirit and the the energy. So, okay, Mike is saying he's, he's with MACD and quite a number of people. Welcome, welcome, gracious, holy, and uh, Paul. You're welcome. So we see these two types of anointing. So when, when you are being anointed, you need to understand the condition. You also need to understand the grace that you have received to say which grace is it. Is it the spirit of a man that, uh, that is operating or is it the energy? It's very, very important because if it's the spirit, that means you have to live your life the way the other person is also living their life. That person, let's say they have certain foods they don't eat, they have certain things they do and certain things they don't do. That means that's how you maintain that anointing, especially if they just gave you their spirit, uh, not at the condition to say uh, it stays uh, uh, for a week or so. Like if they said I gave my spirit, you need to understand, is it there for a week? Is it there? Uh, was I really given the spirit to operate? Or I was just given uh, the energy? So the energy you need to understand that uh, energy, let's say, okay, this is like a mouse. So, if God gave me this mouse as part of my deliverance ministry, if this mouse is part of me as my energy, that's the one that energizes me to do deliverance. That means the moment when I pray for you, this mouse comes to you. And then God now replaces because I have shared. When you give, you receive. When you give, you receive. So the moment when I give, that mouse, I also receive another one to operate with. It's like I will be recharged. It's you are re-energized. Then the spirit, the spirit also needs to be re-energized. The very person that prayed for you, you need to learn how he lives. You need to understand how he lives, what he eats, and also probably prayers. You are welcome uh, from Tanzania and uh Sydney is watching with a quite a number of people. So these are the kinds of anointings that we have. Two types of anointings. So where is the spirit of a man and also the energy. So the energy, according to me, somebody will say which one is better. It's all the same. It's all the same because uh, it's God working in all and all. So that's what I basically wanted to cover there before we get deeper now into how does one get to to recharge these energies or how to work with these energies. So when we 
Okay, before I go much deeper, let me talk about a few international prophecies that I wrote down here. I wrote down some few international prophecies where I say, I saw by the eye of the spirit, there is like a new technology of energy. There's new energy that is going to come. A, this same prophetic word, I saw it, uh, it should be 15, 16 years back concerning technology. So like you see now, we are using like phones like this. But in the near future, uh, I saw, I really don't know how to describe it. God also, I believe he doesn't want me to share much insights because other people might go and invent because he has already appointed certain people more maybe to do it. But it's almost as if, yeah, like you won't walk with a phone or something like that. Uh, but you'll be able to use that, whether I'll just call it a phone. Uh, like It's almost as if like it's a transparent kind of a thing. It's as a result of a, this new energy that I saw. It's a new energy. So technology is evolving. It's moving forward. It's moving forward. So I saw there'll be this kind of new energy. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. Where it's like, I, I don't know how to really describe, but almost, let me say, on this phone that you are watching, let me say, myself, I'm using this S7 that I'm using to record. Let's say you will not see even the, the edges of whatever, the, like of the phone at the back, but you are only seeing something like a screen. But this screen is like you are able to minimize it, you are able to make it so small, in a way you can enlarge it. That's what I saw. I'm trying to interpret what I saw in the spirit, but those who are called to bring that into existence, they will explain better by bringing the, the technology. Okay, there in, in Zimbabwe, let's pray. Let's pray for the nation because uh, things are going a little bit down. Though what uh, I had prophesied in time when I said the president that has been put there by God, uh, he will not last long. That's what I want to say. He will not last long. He's just there for a season. He's just there for a season. So keep in prayer, but definitely a change has already come in Zimbabwe. As we prophesied before even the, the president resigned, we had already indicated that a change is coming. Within the very year they moved him. Now there's another president and there's going to be a change again. So when that change comes, that's where the nation will start to be getting established. And also South Africa, we really need to pray because you see what's happening. South Africa, we need to pray for South Africa. We need to mainly pray for the president to have a proper advice, people that can advise him properly because the nation is going down economically. The nation is really going down economically. Okay, so the anointing. This is how the anointing is transferred whether both of the spirit of a man or the energies. So these energies, you can smear. Like when you are, when you are talking about smearing, when you rub off hard press, it is transferred. Okay, it's not like when a person you just start rubbing said, I'm receiving the anointing. No, it has to take the willingness of the person giving the anointing and also the willingness of the person receiving so when you begin to press it according to the scripture, you smear, it enters. And also there are other ways how this anointing enters. And also it depends what measure of anointing it is. Because sometimes if it's a measure that is going in bones, it does not go by smearing. The anointing that goes in bones, it does not, it's, it's not this one of smearing. So... I wrote quite a number of notes because I, I want to make sure that I cover almost all the points. If I just allow the spirit to take me through, I will leave most of the things. So the other thing is the anointing is tangible. Of course, there are most men of God, maybe that God anointed them, but they never saw how they were anointed. They don't even know. They just know that they are anointed by the reason of the spirit just coming upon them. 
So this is what happens. The anointing is tangible. The day you are anointed, if you can see, it depends also to what degree. Remember, we are talking about different types of anointings. There are people who can operate in the prophetic where you can only see people's problems, solutions, past, present, future. But these people might not even see angels at all. They might not even converse with the angels. There are also those who can see angels, who can converse, who can go to heaven. But those people, they cannot uh, prophesy. They need the energy of prophets. The fact that you can prophesy it does not mean you see angels. The fact that you can see angels, the Lord himself, it does not mean you can prophesy. You need someone that operates in that dimension to bring you in so that you start also operating in the prophetic or in deliverance. And then, so on the day, myself, the days I was anointed, first time when I was anointed, I actually saw a lot of things happening. Uh, the day when the Holy Spirit came upon me, I saw a lot of doves and clouds. And it's like we, where we were, doves were just all around us. Some doves would just come and sit on me. Uh, but I didn't understand what that was. But it's only now where I began to receive understanding. Okay, so that means God was pouring the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon me. He was pouring the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon me. So now, every now and then, if I, if it's now time to minister, I feel the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I do see him in the same way I'm saying. I cannot, you can literally see him. He comes, he can rest. Sometimes I can just feel the presence, the same presence with the same feeling. When he comes, you become bold. Your eyes are open. Whether you begin to command spirits, based on the measurement of the grace that has come is it for deliverance is it for whatever the case might be so don't forget the anointing can be seen it's tangible so it's transferable so how does how do you transfer this anointing the anointing can be transferred by smearing hard pressing to okay we said uh, smearing hard pressing by declaration by prayer by fellowship, by fellowship, by association. Uh, I wrote quite a number of points here. Let me not even leave any of them. By seeing, that's how you receive the anointing. Just by looking, you can actually receive the anointing. Uh, by acknowledging, by serving. Serving, we see that uh, where the scripture says, there is one called Elisha that was pouring Elijah in the hands he was pouring hands in the hands of Elijah. So that anointing came by the reason of serving, by giving, connecting definitely to the ministry, like uh, Cornelius. Cornelius was a sower. He was giving. He was giving. And God came to give him the anointing because of giving. So socializing. We always see in the scripture that say, uh, and now the sons of the prophet, they understood, even in the book of Samuel, you hear that the sons of the prophet, you need to understand to say, why, okay, let me just break it down, why those people were always moving as a company. The reason why those people were always moving as a company is because of socializing. So there might be 10 or 20, or all of them might be from one father, but they all don't operate in the same dimension. So when they are fellowshipping, they'll be, the Bible says, iron sharpens iron. They are sharpening each other. So they move with that realm most of the time. They move with that realm most of the time. Wherever they are, that realm is, is at work. That realm is at work because they are reminding each other, we need to do this, we need to do this. This is how I did it. This one is asking how. What did you do? So it's socialization. And then seeing, acknowledging, giving, serving. And many other forms. Okay, who are these people that can give the anointing? Of course, we start by the Father himself. The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the saints in the glory, uh, angels, men of God here on earth. And uh, so far I can stop there. So mainly these are the people that can give the anointing. Those who are called by his name, those that God has called. These are the main people that can give. So the Father himself can give you the anointing. Normally, okay, let me say, this is sometimes when it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I know that uh, 
I said when 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 the Lord when I was checking to heaven, He gave me like the energy of healing and deliverance, and I was molding it in a way until it entered my hands. But sometimes He does not need to give you anything because the Bible says, "And the Word became flesh." Now we are speaking at a godly dimension. I said, ah, but when I was with the Father, He didn't say anything. He said, "I will do this," and I started seeing it. It's because God's Word uh, is powerful. Is the sovereign God. Whatever he says, it has to happen. So if God says you shall prophesy, that means it's, it has already started. Just the power of the presence, you just meeting God, Jesus Christ, the angels, and uh, the Holy Spirit, or even a man of God, it actually unlocks certain realms. It actually unlocks certain realms that you start moving in. You, you might not know, but automatically there is a dimension that is birthed. You, let's say the Lord stands here now. Besides him being the Lord, besides him giving me the message that he has come to give me, the Bible says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and life. Meaning to say life is coming to me. Even if he's just giving me a prophecy for someone else, but I'm receiving life. Just the fact that I'm seeing life, that means also life is entering me. Like we said, what you see, you get impartation from. So when we see the Lord, when we have these kinds of visions, we are actually energized. We receive impartation. So it comes through fellowship, declarations, and these other uh, points that are indicated. Also sacrificing and all that. So let's say sac sacrificing, uh, fellowship, declarations, uh, serving, giving, socialization, seeing, and acknowledging. To say, ah, that man of God. Just the fact that you point to say, that man of God, uh, Mike, is a man of God. The fact that the Holy Spirit has given you conviction. Say, I acknowledge is the way he teaches. Or I acknowledge is prophetic. The moment when you say that you have actually connected to that prophetic dimension. That's what most people don't know. The, fact, the moment when you say that you have connected because you are acknowledging. So the moment when you acknowledge, you receive the same thing. It might not be at a highest dimension, but you receive it same time. You receive it same time. So when you acknowledge, the other way to, to, to move in the prophetic easily, you acknowledge the person that moves in the prophetic to say, that man of God, may is the same grace that is working upon him, may it also work upon me. Say, so I've seen the global seer moving in worldly, like, doing the global prophecies. I see this about this country and I've seen it happen. So I acknowledge him. The, the moment when you say that, that grace rests on you. That grace rests on you at a certain measure. Now, how to maintain? I, I'm trying to write so that I can be very, very uh, punctual when it comes to this point. Sometimes if I just take it, it can be very powerful, but at the end of the day, you might miss the obvious points. How to maintain the anointing? You maintain the anointing by using the anointing. If it's healing, that means you must. That means you need to continue in the prophetic. If it's deliverance, you need to keep doing deliverance. So if you don't use the anointing, you will begin to doubt. We see that John later on started doubting the very gospel that he preached all along, all the years that he has ever been John. He started doubting. It's because he had stopped preaching. In prison, he, he had forgotten. You are still supposed to preach in prison, but he stopped using the anointing. The anointing was there for him to use it. But he stopped saying, ah, no, now let the Messiah come and rescue me. So you maintain the anointing by using it and sticking to your own land. You stick to your own land. This is a the major, major key that even most men of God are missing it. When you're starting ministry, I'm not talking about a church. When you're starting ministry, what I'm doing now is ministry. When you're starting ministry, you realize that you can teach, you can preach, you can prophesy, you can do miracles, you can do quite a number of things. You can do a number of things. Healing, miracles, deliverance, and all that. You see that... It's because you, you are doing all this by faith. But maybe there are only four gifts in you. 
Maybe it's just teaching, prophecy, and deliverance. Maybe it's just those. So now most men of God, when they've seen that they are also doing miracles, they are also doing deliverance, they are doing this, it's now a number of things. They get to be confused. They now concentrate on other things and miss the purpose. Uh, your main call, let's say your main gifting, like myself, my main gifting, uh, I can preach, I've seen, I can teach, I've done miracles, I've done deliverance, I've done the prophetic, I've done a lot of things. My main gifting in me is to cause someone to begin to operate in the supernatural. That is my main gifting. The second gift from that one, I see a lot international. I'm not like, I see more international prophecies more than I see on individuals. Meaning to say, I'm not basically sent to individuals. My concentration should be global. Most of my prophecies are about presidents, about uh, nations, about uh, pastors, prophets. God will be telling me that this person is missing it because of this. This person is about to go back to glory. So my main call is mainly there. I can prophesy individuals. I always do that. But that's not my main thing. So now what I'm trying to teach is that if I start missing the point, if I start missing my call, so my main angel does this, what I indicated, to unlock people to operate in the supernatural. Two, of course, it works with the teaching. Two, to communicate global. So the moment when I miss the point and start concentrating on individuals, I have missed the point. I'm missing my call. I hope you understand. If you understand me, please type something there. Type something. Type something. Type something. Type that I understand. Magdi is partaking. Wonderful. So that's what happens. So in it, for example, you can be a businessman and an apostle or a prophet, a businessman and evangelist, or a businessman and uh, a missionary. So it now depends to say who, uh, like which one is your main call there? Is it the missionary or the business? That's why most Christians are really missing it. Or more sons. More sons are really missing that point to say they, they are called. In, they can see that I'm an evangelist and at the same time businessman. So you need to take your time and pray and see which one is greater. Is it the evangelism? If it's evangelism and you are concentrating on business, meaning to say the business won't work. But if you do a lot of evangelism and this business, it will just come on its own because you are doing what you are supposed to do. So the rest of the gifts, they actually submit to the main gifts. So in other words, the main angel does not have to submit to, to the small angels that are serving under him. I can, I've done miracles, I've done even deliverance, I've done healing. But my main angel is, is the angel of unlocking of the word to make people like God. That is my main angel. So the moment if I start concentrating more on miracles... That means I'm diverting. Though, <clears throat> this is what happens. Miracles are wonderful. We have done miracle money. We have done all kinds of miracles. But my angels, they don't have to, they actually don't want to keep doing that because I'm not called to keep doing that. We just do to show, to say it's possible. I don't know if somebody's getting the point. I hope you get the point. I hope you do get the point. I hope you do get the point. So my main angel is like his... For, for instance, Michael has other angels that serve under him. Uh, the name of my angel is called Laili. He's a watcher angel. He's the angel that gives me prophecies. Whether concerning individuals, international prophecies, whatever it may be. That's the name of my angel. But when he came to introduce himself to me, he said, I submit under Gabriel. He said, I submit under Gabriel. So meaning to say Gabriel is more powerful than him or he's his leader. So now if, let's say I'm now, let's say Gabriel, for instance, let's say I have, I'm working with both 
Gabriel and Lady. If I'm working with these two angels, then uh, I concentrate on, on the smaller one, which is this one. And yet there is order in the spirit that it's Gabriel that I must get odd. This one lately has to actually get orders when Gabriel is done. That's how it works. That's how it works. So once you miss it, you want to exchange because you have seen someone doing miracles and those miracles, they're like, wow, you have missed your call. You must stick to your lane. Try and stick to your lane. That's why it's good not to compete. Even if you acknowledge, even if you want to give international prophecies, but don't leave your lane. Because also, your lane actually makes me see God. I say, wow, what he's doing, I also like it. What he's doing, I love it so much. I also want to do what he's doing. But though I don't concentrate, because that's not who I am. Our God is not a God of repetition. Where, he's, uh, where he runs short of run short of gifts no he is very big he is very big and is loaded with gifts so it's good you acknowledge my international grace but there is a land that god called you in but however if you are given my spirit or if you are given the energy to prophesy by me meaning to say you are still going to be able to prophesy international prophecies you are still going to be able to see angels to see heaven, to visit heaven and all that. But there is a main thing that really God called you for. That thing you need to stick to it. That is the main, main, main thing. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so the, let me also try and cover some questions. Somebody saying, ministry teaching on leadership and business teaching and leadership come at the same time. I need clarity. Of the first calling ministry or business okay so what happens is if you are doing business let's say you have seen that you are you are called into ministry we have also seen that you're a businessman or a businesswoman if you see that you have been doing business it's not working it simply means you're not doing ministry ministry is actually greater that's how that one is just like one plus one said I've been concentrating more me myself I know uh, if I st start concentrating more on business than I am called for Im like to to unlock people or to impart people with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ or to minister the gospel to put it in simple terms that means my business will just start going down why because I'm not balanced anymore it's like quash yolk it's like you're eating a lot of starch there are no proteins you must balance you must balance I hope it's clear right there. I hope it's clear. If there's a question, please indicate there. Yeah, so those are the main keys uh, concerning our callings. So, <clears throat> how do we maintain? It's prayer, fasting, fellowship, and if you're received by impartation, by keep you keep acknowledging the person. You keep acknowledging those that have helped you. Okay. Uh, basically, these are the main things that uh, that I wrote. And two, let me say this main point: keep pushing for your main call. Keep pushing for your main call. Keep pushing for your main call <clears throat> what am i saying you can do deliverance you can do healing you can do all these things but keep growing the main thing about you keep growing the main thing of course you you can grow all these gifts to be almost equal it's you that must multiply these gifts to be almost like they're equal it's not like a like let me let me put it this way uh, when I started moving in the prophetic, I started seeing individuals and international prophecies. And then I saw, I started realizing that I actually have more interest in international prophecies than individuals. Because sometimes individuals, they don't even listen. But you speak to a nation, maybe in that nation, 500 will listen. But you speak to one person, they doubt, and then that's it. That pr prophetic word is wasted. But I, li I speak to a nation, maybe 10,000, a million listen, <coughs> will save a lot of people. 
that's how I started developing interest. But still, if let's say my gift in a way is like in a way is not balanced, I, I see more international than individuals. That means I can work this one to be equal with the one for international prophecies. The same one for individuals. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> Haran says, Prophet, does one need energy to detach the spirit at will? I really don't understand what you are actually asking me. But definitely you need energy. If there's something that is attached to you that is uh, troubling you, for you to separate yourself, you need an energy of deliverance. That energy will come and push back darkness. Okay, Donald is saying it's now nearly two years I'm working with I'm working day or something without a day off, even Sundays. Uh, does God hear my prayer? Definitely. <laughs> Remember what I have always taught. Oh Donald, I have said God gives you, but it's up to you to act by faith. It's up to you to push. It's just like a let me put it this way, Donald, uh, in simple terms. Uh, God has blessed you. You can see that this job is God, uh, it's God's given. It's God who gave you the job. So now it's just like a child, a woman who's saying I'm pregnant. It's a nice child. The mother loves the child. But when it's now time for deliver, it's not an issue of smiling. It's an issue of pushing to get the miracle. So if you want to get a deeper miracle than the one you have now like for that miracle this job is the one that is inside you need to push and that push it can cost you you can cry that's where most people they don't realize that uh, even jesus had to be uh, stabbed on the like when they were putting the nails here they stabbed him when they pierced him there it was pain to get what more sons so it does it it came with a price. So most people they think that it must just come nicely because God is involved. No, sometimes you need to push. And when you push, uh, the pinching can be very tricky. The pinching can be very tricky. But I want to tell you the truth that uh, for every miracle to be born, somebody needs to push. You actually feel the pain sometimes. You feel the pain. But definitely you will get the miracle at the end of the day. As Jesus said, he says, now the mother forgets the pain when the child is born. The mother forgets the pain when the child is born. Because now she's seen the blessing. But during that time of pushing, it's not nice. So, Donald, you need to push and get a new job. It's either you push and command your bosses in the spirit to say, from this Sunday, there shall be no business. Sunday will be off. Or even Saturday, it's up to you. God bless you, God bless you. So mainly the, the points that I wanted to indicate, I have covered them. So we also maintain by praying, fasting, and foods. Foods, you check which foods uh, must you eat in the spiritual realm, uh, even in the physical realm. There are certain foods also that you need to eat in the spiritual realm. Uh, I want to say something about uh, the scripture that says, and Elijah ate the food that gave him that carried him in the strength of 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, most people, when they read that party, yeah, they think they do understand, but they don't actually understand what really happens there. Some things you don't understand them until you talk about them. Elijah, okay, let me say, if you start fasting, if you are fasting in the spirit, like if your fasting is inspired by God, Elijah's body, was already energized to immortality when he was still here on earth. So what actually transpired that time? Elijah was in the spirit. So the Bible recorded what happened in the spirit. It's just like John when he was saying, I was in the spirit in the Lord's day. People think that John had entered in the spirit. John was already energized to immortality already. So it's the same concept with Elijah. You must, when you are fasting, let's say you are fasting in the physical. Spiritually, you are fed. They feed you food. 
God feeds you food. Your angel feeds you food. So that part where it says, and now the angel brought him food and he ate, and that food carried him in the strength of 40 days. That part to, let's say to you and me now, uh, I will have to relax. When I enter in the vision, then I eat. Then uh, it is manifested in the physical. Then it's manifested in the physical. But to Elijah, the spiritual realm no longer had a border for him. The spiritual realm for Elijah had no borders anymore. So that time when the angel brought food, that was the mess behind. I hope somebody do understand the revelation. I hope you do understand the revelation. So when we fast in the physical, as for me, when I'm fasting, uh, I've got certain revelations on fasting. Yes, of course, it's decreasing and the Lord increasing. But if I feel like uh, the angels didn't give me food, let's say I, I, when I didn't see a vision or I saw a vision or whatever, if I don't see a vision, I know that my physical body needs food. I eat. And it doesn't mean I've canceled the fasting. The fasting even continues. I was telling uh, Mike the other time when we were fasting, I said, ah, you know, I've just finished eating now. And just after I finished eating, ah, pa, my eyes just opened even more. <laughs> then they had not yet eaten. They, they were still like very hungry when they were fasting. May I thought, ah, no. Why is God not bringing us food in the spirit? Because why am I becoming hungry? Because when you're fasting, you're not supposed to become hungry in the physical. You are not supposed to become hungry. If you become hungry, that means there's a little bit of a question mark. You have to eat in the spirit, not the marine food, no. Of course, the marines and all that, if you don't have a strong foundation or mentorship or who inspired you to fast, you can eventually eat from a, a wrong source, which is uh, incorrect. You have to eat from a right source. Says, yes, man of God, go deeper. As in balancing. In weekends, it is the ministry of teaching. During the week, I do business, but the key, the issue is ministry is giving out of loving God and the heart, calling business to bring source financial income to manage basic needs. Of living need to conquer the fruits. Hey, this message is very long. The fruits in the business. Powerful, powerful, powerful. God bless you all. I thank, thank you for, for all the questions that you are putting through. But uh, what I want to say from what you, I think if I'm hearing you right, it's an issue of balancing to say you don't want to do ministry but it, you are hungry. So it depends. Sometimes God can actually want business more than ministry. Sometimes it can change. Sometimes it can change. Look at Jeremiah. People like Jeremiah, when they were, when they were, before he was in prison, he was more in ministry, more in ministry, more in ministry. When he was now in, mini, in prison, God is already talking about houses. He's talking about business. So meaning to say there was a transition. It was now more of business and less of ministry so it doesn't mean if ministry is like this it will forever remain like this if you're a business person sometimes it can go like this seasons can change then it becomes a ministry more remember the person that is sending us is god so sometimes people try to be stubborn and want to keep maintaining a, a, a name to say ah, i've already started ministry so it just has to be like that if it doesn't become like that people will say i have, fo I have fallen or i failed incorrect ministry changes jesus was a, was actually a businessman even if you check the scriptures very well you see that they would preach 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 they would go back and catch the fish the fish was basically for business it wasn't for just like people to eat no it was for business even that's what he had taught the apostles you must work the moment when he when he was crucified the disciples went away they went to work when he came to them he found them at work so sometimes it's like that he actually wants you to work because you can't keep doing ministry sometimes you definitely have to work so you now need to understand is it 
more of ministry now and less of business. Those are key things. You're welcome, Danny, and uh, the rest of the people that have just joined. God bless you. I don't know the person that was laughing. Were they laughing because of the revelation of eating? The revelation of eating is very deep. So when we fast, we need to eat in the spirit. That is the truth. Because <clears throat> we are receiving energy. Remember, we fast so that God gives us something. Like we, we must be empowered. As for me, I don't die from hunger when I'm fasting. If I see that it's getting deep, I eat. And when I eat, God answers me even fast. Because there is no strife in, in the kingdom of God. But there is power. So that's why the Lord has given me the revelation of the priestly fasting. We are priests and we are kings. When we are fasting, we eat fruits. We eat, it's not Daniel's fasting. We can actually eat even nice food. But though not like a lot. Just maybe you just pray and eat. And you are still fasting. Maybe you do that 40 days and you are still fasting. God even answers you more. <clears throat> Why? <clears throat> it's because those actually sometimes who were fasting. You see, people want to say hey, Moses went and he was with God for 40 days and 40 nights. And Moses didn't do that once or twice. More than once, more than twice. If he was not eating, he was going to die. That's what I would tell you. If you don't eat when you're fasting, you will die. So you must give, you must be given food in the spirit. That's why you hear that ah, so-and-so was fasting and the person died. That means God didn't hear their prayer. I don't even know who teaches such people how to fast because you need a full revelation of fasting. You need a full revelation of fasting. So let's do uh, the question and answer. Because of time, because I managed to, to cover the, the points. Remember the the scripture was Numbers eleven twenty five, where you can prophesy by the spirit where you receive the spirit. We say the types of anointing. Then uh first Kings nineteen sixteen uh, where you receive the energy, not the spirit, but the energy. When you receive the energy, you begin to operate by the energy. Remember the energy, the energy finishes just like your battery, uh, like your phone. If it's charged, it can carry you through for some time. So if you are given the energy for deliverance, it, it can work for five years, it can work for three years, it can work for two months, it can dry up. So if you don't go back and reload. So why is it like that? Now let me, somebody might be getting confused. I'll come back to the questions that uh, people have started asking. Let me put it this way. You are called to be a deliverance minister. Meaning to say, <clears throat> God has already given you like a one-time energy. That one, it works. Whether you fast, you pray, or you don't, whatever, it just works. But that there's a certain dimension, like what Jesus said. This does not go out except by prayer and fasting. They actually, let's just remove the statement that the Lord said by prayer and fasting let's cancel that let's look into say what do you receive when you are praying and fasting what jesus was trying to tell us is that those who can cast out this kind of spirit meaning to say they are maintaining a deeper relationship with god and when they are fasting they receive energies do you get the sense when they are fasting they receive energies it's not about fasting because everyone is fasting and people are not getting results so what you get when you are fasting is what will cast out the demon that Jesus was talking about. When you have a deeper relationship with God, meaning to say, if you keep praying, if you have a solid relationship with the Lord, you are able to cast anything. Nothing stands in your way. So because when Jesus is talking about prayer, remember, the, the, if you read, if you want to know like how, how is prayer or what is prayer, Prayer, basically, you look at, uh, especially John 14, going upwards. You see that the things that Jesus was, it's like he was talking, and at the same time, it's, it's like he was praying. That is called prayer. You report everything you do to the Father. Oh, Father, today I went to this place. I did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And uh, <clears throat> tomorrow I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I want to involve you into do, into this plan. Like what the Bible says, says, if you don't involve God in your plans, they will fail. So, 
when he's talking like that, the father comes, then he tells him, what you did is the right thing. I also want you to do one, two, three, four, five, six tomorrow. That's prayer. So meaning to say you have a relationship with God. So what Jesus is saying, this cannot go out by, except by fasting and prayer, meaning to say by a relationship and energies. That's the part you need to hear from that scripture. I hope it's clear. It says, how do you know if you have been given food? I pray for you right now in Jesus' name. As from today, whenever you pray, whenever you fast, the grace that operates in my life will also operate. You'll be able to discern and see in the spiritual realm in Jesus' name. It's obvious that when you sleep, most of the time you see your spirit. So that your spirit, most people here, like I've always taught even in the church, you do go to heaven, but it's just that the enemy tempers with your mind. Which is why I'd say the best times to pray is 1, like 12 midnight to 3 a.m. So in between those times, most of the time, whenever you wake up, you realize that ah, I was actually in heaven. And I saw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But wake up at 6 or 5, ah, it's too late. The enemy would have already come and tried to corrupt it, your mind and congest you with other things so that you forget the main thing that God showed you. So you do get to heaven. As for you, Paul, you really do get to heaven and even other people here. But it's just that the enemy now is the one that comes now to just come and dance, 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 dance in the rest of the dream. Then you don't remember anything. But as from today, you'll be able to remember in Jesus' name. God bless you. Uh, put through questions for for, uh, for for the teaching or even something that is beyond this. Something that is beyond this. <laughs> Jesus. Wonderful. Are you there? Uh, I've got few prophecies for certain people there. So if you are not com putting comments, I will not give those prophecies because I won't be knowing if the person is online or not. Because I'm still learning how to use this Facebook thing. So Patek, put through comments there. So I encourage you, use God's word. Declare what God says about you. Confirm what God says. Don't just say, I am who, what the word of God says I am. What does the word of God say about you? The word of God says about you, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted and all that. That's what... God's word says about you. So that's what you need to confess. I am the head. There is a lifting up. That's what you need to confess. That's what you need to decree. So all the rest, whatever that happens uh, concerning the scriptures, judgment, sins, and all those things, you don't even focus on those. If you focus on sin, you end up sinning too much. But if you focus on holiness, righteousness, on what God says about you, you eventually become like your father in heaven. Glorious, glorious, glorious. Uh, put through questions there. I, I've got people. I remember somebody asked me a question. Then I asked them to bring this question, I think, on this platform. I forgot. But on the last one, I think he was asking about... I'm trying to remember. Let me try to remember as I'm answering others. How do I tell prophecies for people that I have not seen for long? Should I wait till the time I meet them? Or I should look for them. <clears throat> One, pray for them. Pray for them before you even talk about meeting them or prophesy them. It's a good thing. It's a good question. Pray for them before you even meet them. When you pray for them, you can look for them still. It's part of a, a subordinate heart. It's like you are showing that you are submissive with your heart. So look for, for them. You can look for them. You can look for them. God bless you. Pastor Sini, is, he has been growing. Uh, put through your testimony. Pastor Sini, you said you saw the angel. What did the angel tell you last week? Just encourage the brethren. Uh, if you can type and tell us what the angel looked like and what he said. Glorious Jesus. Glorious God. 
So there's there's a glorified Jesus. There's another teaching. There's a glorified Christ. There's a Christ uh, that lived here on earth. There's Jesus who lived here on earth. That's why you see that when John is defining him in the book of Revelations, he was defining, he had his hair like white wool and all that. But Jesus was here on earth, he doesn't have that hair. His hair on earth was more like golden brown and like golden brown in a way. That's how he looked like. Sprogna ala branikas. Man of God, I had a dream last night. It's like you came where I wake, but I didn't see how you went. And I woke up. Powerful. That means the grace has just stepped at your workplace. As for me, let me assist your faith. I pray uh, that you get a new job. You need to push and get a new job. You need to push and get a new job. Uh, please put through questions. I like teaching because teaching it really edifies us and it uh, it lifts us up. It lifts us up. Hamirabi uh, Kunda is saying, "Professor, wonderful." So let's let's get going. Let's get going. So there is a glorified Christ who is now in the heavenlies, but the same person. It's like he has two. Uh, it's like a two in one in a way, but it, I know it's a deep, it's a deep thing. People now say, "No, is is it trying to say Jesus is like two or something?" No, it's one. Just like uh, you yourself here on earth, uh, uh, you have this body that you have. The moment when you go and join the world of spirits, you are going to have another look. Just like Elijah, I have met Elijah. I have met most of the apostles and the and the prophets. Sometimes when they do come to meet these people, I see the their earthly face, like how they look like here on earth, so that it becomes easy for me to recognize them. If you just see them in heaven, where they just look 15, it's going to confuse you and say, ah, this guy looks 25. How can it be so and so? But though, of course, there's the ministration of the Holy Spirit, which is wonderful. So, Okay. As I just spoke about that, I just remember. Uh, there's a new grace that came this week that God released on earth. This grace, uh, let me read. Let's say you're in 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s or 80s. You're going to see people change. I know what I'm saying, it doesn't make sense. But you're going to see people change. The person looked 40 or fifth then you see the person change all of a sudden it's like he has two features in a way where you see that there's this age but they they look 27 25 god has i was asking god i said what is this then he says that i've released the energy of immortality the energy of immortality was released uh let me read the date on the 12th of october 2018 he said i have released the energy of immortality. Let me put it this way. Uh, I know people have prophesied before. Even Peter, they said, this is the last generation. These are the days that Joel said they know that. But believe me, this, uh, let me say, my own sons can probably have their own sons. But I don't think they will have their grandsons. This is almost like the very last generation that will be energized with. We have already been energized for those who are partaking, are already partaking. So we have received this endowment of new grace, of immortality. You see somebody will be looking like 50. All of a sudden you see the person ah, is now like he's 24 or 25. People are going to ask themselves, what's really happening? So we are in the very last days. And by the time the spirit is poured upon all flesh, this is also the prayer that I want you to pray. Even before the Spirit is poured upon all flesh, always pray every day and say, Lord, energize me with immortality. Energize me with immortality. God must energize you with immortality. That's where now you will not, you will stop growing. You will stop growing like in terms of the features where the meat is like just hanging and whatnot. Also, that's why you see that even in this day and age, 
uh, you need to gym. You also need to gym. And I'm not saying gyming helps <clears throat> uh, on what God is saying. Whether the person gyms or not, it doesn't matter. But on your own, you need to gym. On your own, you need to get rid of fats and all these things. So every day pray for God to energize you with immortality. Say, Lord, Father, energize me with immortality. Father, you see, there's a scripture that Paul said, <clears throat> where he was saying, I can live with you. I want you to take note. Paul was saying, I can live with you. But uh, no, me, I want to be with Christ. Paul had received the revelation that I have received the energy of immortality. But however, he chose to say, I know what, let me retire from this. Let me join the world of spirits. He chose to say he wants to die. But he now had the revelation. You ask yourself to say, he's saying, I can choose to be with you. What kind of a statement is that? Remember the dimension of Paul. A person, a snake bites him. He does not feel it. He does not even die. Talkless of dying, he doesn't even feel that a snake has eaten him. Paul was already energized, but he still said to God, me, I want to come. He said, I want to come and join you. So God must energize you with immortality. Every day pray, Lord, energize me with immortality. Energize me with immortality. In Jesus' name. So I pray against this spirit that has risen in South Africa of killing, stealing, and destruction in the mighty name of Jesus. We shut it down in Jesus' name. We are energized with immortality. No weapon fashioned against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Glorious God, glorious God, glorious God. Okay, looks like a... We are running short of uh, uh, questions. People have stopped asking questions. So let's see. But ask God to say, Lord, energize me with immortality. You will not die. That's why a person will throw boiling water to you to just become like they, they, are, they throw cold water on you. Why? Because you are energized. Things People will try to attack you. Demons will try to attack you. But they cannot win because you have become a spirit yourself. Already you are a spirit, but they were taking advantage of your body. So now God has switched your body now to become a spiritual body. So may God change your body into becoming a spiritual body in the name of Jesus. My body is changed to immortality. I declare it, I believe it, and that's what, that's what happens. Anything that is not this knowledge, it's demonic, I refuse to accept it. I accept the knowledge of the glory of God that says I am a spirit and he has energized me just as he gave John, Elijah, Enoch and the other saints and the prophets. Uh, I receive the same grace in Jesus' name. So I want you to take note uh, when Jesus was saying there are some among you here that will not die when you are speaking to his disciples. He was not only talking about John. So amongst the 12, let's say the 11, because that other one he died. There are some who did not die. There are some who did not die. So may you begin to receive that energy. And be a willing vessel to go so deep in the things of the spirit. Make yourself a willing vessel. Remember when this, un this anointing comes. Like somebody will be now saying. But how, how eventually do I get to, to be so deep? I want you to receive the anointing in the bones, the anointing in the marrow, the anointing in the flesh, the anointing in the soul, the anointing <clears throat> in the spirit. When you receive the Father, okay, this, I want you to confess this declaration. Let me not even make it a teaching. Let's be practical. Just say, I bind the Father to my spirit. I bind the Holy Spirit to my soul. I bind Jesus Christ to my body. So what you are simply saying is the Lord has made has become one with you. That's why I'm saying to this with this kind of revelation, death will never come near you. Death will be afraid. They will be asking, Death, where is your sting? He cannot sting you. Death is a small boy. For he has nothing in us. We live for the Lord. You're saying, Magdi, how do I overcome trials and temptation. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> says, how do I overcome? You overcome by being strong, by being prayerful, by fasting. You have to overcome by being strong, by praying and fasting. If the season is tough, you also be, be tough in that season. So bind the Father to your spirit. Bind even you as you are asking that same question. Bind the Holy Spirit to your soul. You bind Jesus to your flesh. Make sure that you receive also energies in all dimensions. Spirit upon spirit in the flesh, like the anointing in the flesh, the anointing uh, in the bones, the anointing in the marrow, the anointing in the blood. So how do we get to put the anointing in the blood? The anointing in the blood, it comes when we partake the Lord's body. I mean blood. The anointing in the uh, flesh, it comes when we take the Lord's flesh. The anointing in the bones, I transfer it right now in Jesus' name. May you receive it. The anointing in the marrow, may you also receive it in Jesus' name. It comes by declarations. It comes by being transferred. So I transfer that very anointing in Jesus' name. Sprale reverene shodobras. says, this week I saw Jesus in the dream. He was about in his thirties. Then he took a sword and pierced himself in the chest. There was light that came out of his chest and all of a sudden he was like a four or five year old. Glory to God. Oh, basically what he's simply saying is almost something like what I was saying to say, the energy of immortality. So God was coming to him, but his, his spirit was able to tap into seeing it, but in another way. So this is the full revelation of what you saw now to say that energy has come now on earth. The energy has now come on earth for immortality. That's a, what I was saying. You are basically, you saw it in the dream. With the new declarations, uh, do you still need to do other declarations like I take power over all the power of the enemy? Yes, definitely. Strip the devil of his powers because the devil basically uses our authority and other people's authority. So we need to strip him off. The power that the devil has, it belongs to us. He took it from our God. So we need to defeat him. We need to defeat him. Take authority over all. This is for those who are still battling with nightmares. You declare that I take authority over all the power of the enemy. Over the demonic hosts around my region. I assign the hosts to break them. To cut them. To chop them. Whatever description you want. You tell the hosts what to do. The moment when you are declaring like that. Swords. Like a sword comes out of your mouth. The angels they come and take. Then they go and battle. They go and battle with them. They go and battle. And you see that most people start testifying. Ah, these days I no longer have nightmares. These days I no longer have nightmares. Even you yourself, you no longer may be facing so much attacks. Glorious God. Okay, uh, let me just talk to one or two people. Is uh, Amirabi still there? Amirabi, are you still there? Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, what a powerful revelation that I was giving concerning immortality. It says, then the Lord pierced himself with a sword, and it's like he became like four or five years old. So, that energy of immortality has just been deposited in all the earth. All the earth. Everybody has received it. So, those who might not have seen it or heard it, receive it right now in Jesus' name. It 
says, glory be to God, we are now operating in the automatic. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, uh, this is what I saw about Amirabi. I saw like a school. I saw a place where there is like a farm. It's like where you guys have a farm. God said to me, if you guys you want to see man like as a family, uh, you need to start a school. You need to start a school. Do you understand? Just type something so that I see if you are still online. Or ask something. So, you need to start a school. You need to build a school where the farm is. Because I saw that there is going to be like cattle sold just to venture into this thing. I don't know if maybe somebody had already approached you concerning the same insight. Or you guys had thought about it. If you didn't, that means that's what God is saying. But put through a comment there first so that I see if I can go deeper or what. It says, these days I'm energized. These days I'm energized to feel the zeal for business. Can this be a new anointing? Now you have a zeal for business. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It means uh, the Lord is also empowering you in Jesus' name. After starting to listening to your teachings, I had a dream in a huge quiet place full of light. The Lord appeared and he said, he wants to teach me about the fruits of the Spirit and he mentioned patience. And so I can teach others, pray for this grace to come to pass. To, to teach, uh, to teach uh, about this thing. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Remember, we were also talking about the very thing, say, the fruit of the Spirit recently. So, the fruit of the Spirit is something that is really needed to all believers. Patience, we, we learn it when we, are in, uh, when we are in seasons of dryness, when, when we are going through difficult times. When we are going through difficult times, that's when we learn to be patient. Because patience, you don't learn it when things are just moving smoothly. So if the Lord speaks to you about patience, that means there's a situation or there's a season where he's going to communicate with you like gradually, gradually, gradually. Hey, you will overcome. Whatever season that you are in, be patient and teach others. Basically, if the Lord is asking you to teach others, Meaning to say he's already giving you a mandate to teach people. So make sure that wherever you are, you are a testimony. Wherever you are, you are a testimony. Make sure that you are ministering God's word. So can this school be started, Amirabi, so that your things can work very well? The main shareholder will be like a lady, according to what God showed me. Spewe. Spewe, she's the main shareholder so I speak to the to these people i'm talking about and then see if maybe maybe they might be thinking about it they not yet approached you or whatever but i saw like uh, you guys like selling some things to get this vision going and the lord promised me he said if they can do this school they are going to have serious money they're going to have serious money. It will eventually grow to become something like a big boarding school that our people will be traveling fine or wide, even others from different countries to, to that school. Wonderful. So is there anybody with a question? If there's a question, just please put it through there concerning what I said. You know, I declare you with an ability to interpret dreams in Jesus name you shall be able to see enigma visions that are already explained in the mighty name of Jesus when I'm saying enigma meaning to say dreams like how the sister is explaining that the Lord appeared to me and he gave me a mandate to teach and he said one two three these are the kind of dreams that I pray that you begin to have from today in the mighty name of Jesus press on may you increase in the mighty name of Jesus May you have enigma. May you have explained visions in the name of Jesus. Clear visions in Jesus' name. Clear dreams 
your ears when you are sleeping like this you will hear a voice speak to you that tomorrow you are meeting so and so this is what will happen this deal must be like this but if you don't pray like this this might happen so you start hearing a voice in your dream you start hearing a voice you start hearing a voice i send my angels right now to come and minister to you in the name of jesus my angels whenever the enemy plans anything negative against your life whether accidents anything demonic whether concerning your marriage or whatever it is i rebuke it in the name of jesus it shall be exposed by these angels that i'm assigning to come and minister to you they will come and minister audibly it can be in the dream it can be in the physical where you will literally hear someone your eyes also will open in the name of jesus your dreams shall be clear. You shall not forget anymore. Anderson Manguero. You shall not forget your dreams anymore in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Sprogne elebragni ivaradi aspre enstere di glahasia. Jem spreliga aspra la rade veristo on straga de la vasi. Jean de elemangari asprege de la asia atabra. You are energized in Jesus' name. You are energized for, for greatness. Lack is not your portion. Increase, multiplication. I assign you from today. Begin to use this same knowledge. Begin to use this same energy to spread. Let this energy be fruitful. May it bring even more sons and sons of God in Jesus' mighty name. So we shall meet Wednesday, 8 p.m., where it's going to be healing and deliverance we are covering healing and deliverance healing and deliverance so sundays we basically keep it for the prophetic school people who desire to grow in the prophetic clear dreams i declare quick clear dreams for all of you in the name of jesus may you have clear dreams in jesus mighty name the lord is your strong tower the lord strengthens you the Lord increase you in the name of Jesus. If there is any witch, this is what I wanted to say. Uh, there is somebody that is so dear to me that I heard that the person passed away. This person, I remember I had prophesied some years back. I said, there is witchcraft fighting you and you are going to die if you are not careful. So the person was completing a degree at all i said just after you finish your degree you need to be more prayerful come close so that i can help you the person didn't listen i just heard that the person passed away just like that and they've buried the person so i said that ah, now uh, it takes crazy faith now for us to go to the graveyard and uh, remove whatever that is buried and try to resurrect it but it's deep but i said that ah, People need to now learn to say when a prophet speaks. I remember the same kind of prophetic word I gave it to someone in prison. A few weeks back, I had gone to see the guy in prison. I spoke to him. I told him, I said, I see certain people that have gathered against you. They are going to come. They are going to arrest you. This and this will happen. The guy said, ah, never. It will not happen. That thing happened. Then eventually, one day, after some time, after I think a year, I decided, ah, let me visit this guy. It's been a while. When I got there, I heard that the guy was arrested. I said, ah, let me visit him in prison. I visited the guy, then he says, exactly as you described it, the thing happened. So why do we have to go through <clears throat> pain before we believe? Now, when, when I'm there, he's saying to you, am I prophet? Everything he tells me come to pass, what not? Everyone. So, <clears throat> witches, if they are witches and wizards that want to kill you, I kill them in Jesus' name. <clears throat> because I've seen that if we leave these witches to live, to keep killing people, it's very deep. People who are the light of the world, they are actually being killed by witches, people of darkness, people who represent darkness. <clears throat> I was very hurt when I heard that the person is just, the person just finished a degree last year and already she's gone. Within a year of finishing a degree, the person still had a brighter future. The witches just devoured that woman and God had told me initially, says, tell this lady to stand in prayer cover her, pray for her, but actually ask her to come so that you lay hands. I spoke to her. She took me for granted. She actually told me that she is her prophet. So I said, uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. If God speaks to me, that means 
the grace over that prophet will not protect you. God has assigned me that I protect you. I pray for you. She didn't listen. She's gone. So such wishes and wizards, they are people who actually live to make sure that you fail. Who actually live. So we are overcoming in Jesus' name. We are overcoming. I pray that this, anybody that is a witch behind them or a wizard behind them, let, the, let that witch be paralyzed in Jesus' name. Because if they don't get paralyzed, I'm telling you, whatever that they want to do to you is going to succeed and it's going to be too late. And as for me, I don't have time to cry. I don't have time to cry. But my heart gets to wonder to say, if people could believe that God is speaking through his voice, will overcome. So I release angels right now. Where you are, Magdi, I release an angel to touch you in Jesus' name. I release angels right now where you are, Emmanuel, to touch you. Michael, a princess, Paul, I command angels to come to you. A Nels, Sydney, Acolin, in the name of Jesus, gracious, I assign an angel to touch you right now. Let the angel touch you. Let the angel touch you. Others are going to actually see the angel now. Others I'm seeing, they will feel like a heat in the hand. I release the angel. I release the angel on your right hand. I release angels. And towards this where you are, I release a grace right now. On towards I see the anointing going upon him strongly. I see him like vibrating. I see him vibrating. I see him vibrating. Shaka, I release an angel over you. I release an angel. I release an angel. Amirabi, I declare also an angel. Anderson, an angel. Ruth, an angel. In the mighty name of Jesus. Parakalabo, Site Embra, Sideresh. Wednesday, 8 p.m., we are meeting. We are meeting, and it's going to be glorious. Invite the sick, invite the brokenhearted. Okay, this is what I want to communicate. <clears throat> we want to do a crusade. We want to do a, a, not like a crusade as such, but a conference for those that can receive this anointing in December. So we need to hire the place. We need to hire the place. We need to organize the sound. We need to to get things going. So if you want to partner with this movement, uh, basically the, the venue we have found, it's a, it costs, uh, is it 650 per hour? 650, 650 runs per hour. So it's going to be like a three day conference because there has to be the laying on of hands, there has to be teaching, there has to be the prophetic. So what I want you to do Yeah, so Pastor Sin is saying we see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit upon Fednat. He's under, I'm actually seeing him like vibrating, go, right, go all over the place. So we want to do this crusade. So I want you to come and partner with me on this very project. Uh, we have to book in time. We have to book in time. We are basically going to be doing this after every three months where we just have a conference, where we just have a conference. So six, let's say it's a, a three hour thing. So 650 times three, we get 1,950 times three days. It's 5,850. And also we will do some branding <clears throat> towards that. So we need something like 6,000 rands. I want you to partner over this conference. We want to do a conference where we do this impartation. Where it's going to be glorious, believe me. It's going to be glorious. It will be amazing. So if you want to partner with us, hey, 
communicate on the inbox, request for my numbers, and then we we see how we can give you the details so that we we get to impact. We also need to make enough fly, flyers. So basically, let's say we are looking at around 10,000 rands. We need to make posters and flyers. We need to advertise everywhere so that we get to impact people. Though it will be the prophetic school, but Jesus must be preached. People need to get to know Jesus. Other people that actually God wants, they are actually in the world. Those people who are cold, they are the ones who are homeless. Sometimes they are even everywhere. So God will speak to them, say, go to this particular event. I will transform your life. So I encourage you to partner with the vision. Partner with the vision. Request for my number and then we'll send you more details on how you can uh, uh, partner with this vision. So I'm really urging people to, uh, the, where is the place? The place is uh, the city hall in Jobek. The city hall in Johannesburg. The city hall in Johannesburg. So I, I encourage you to, uh, to just commit. If you commit, the Lord will send the money. Even if you might say you don't have, but commit. We want to make sure that by the end of this very month that we are in, we have already booked. By the end of the month that we are in, we have booked. It has to be wonderful. It has to be glorious. Do you want your finances to change? God is giving the grace now. Partner with this grace so that we see how many lives will be impacted. The more they are impacted, the more God will also impact your lives, your finances in Jesus' name. So the location is City Hall, Johannesburg. So ministration, it will be like three hours a day. Three hours, three hours, three hours a day. So for three days. We still haven't picked a date yet because we want people to commit. But if there's no one that is committing, that means we are not going to uh, make it happen. We will just continue uh, just like this online. So God bless you. Let's meet 8 p.m. Wednesday. I love you. Spread the word. Subscribe to Global Seer on YouTube and share.